I quickly ran to the Humvees to look for the bombs. I searched every single one until I finally found them, putting them in my bag, including some other weapons and supplies. I saw Lieutenant Enrique and I told him that I got the bombs. He beckoned me over, calling me to hurry up, and I stated yes, sir, right away. As I started running, Lieutenant yelled out to me. I turned around to see ten killer employees charging at me. I heard gunshots from the lieutenant and his men. Thankfully, I got to the door just in time. I looked outside and saw that they managed to kill all of the killer employees. I laughed. <laughs> you bitches didn't stand a chance. I checked my watch and it was 1.25 in the morning. I went up the elevator to the fifth floor. Hey, guys, I'm back, I said. All right, Daniel, how many did you manage to find? The lieutenant replied. I stated that I managed to find 13 C4 bombs. All right, let's go back inside to the safe room so that you can show us where to put these bombs. We went back inside the room and we gathered around the floor to discuss the plan. I started to explain where exactly to put the bombs. I realized that these bombs needed to be planted equally. There were five floors. There was plenty of space. All right, Lieutenant Enrique, I want you and your men to plant three bombs on this floor. You four agents will plant another three on the second floor, and Allie, you and the others, watch the kids. Okay? They all said okay. I'll plant the rest of the bombs. All right, guys. No wasting time. Let's plant these bombs and get the hell out of here. We got out, and we did what I told them to do. As I was setting up the third bomb, I suddenly heard a loud muffled sound, like someone had their mouth taped or something. I went to go check it out, and, you know, I followed the noise. It was coming from a small room, pitch black. So, I turned on my light, and, to my surprise, saw five more kids in that room. I saw that they were tied up with a rope, and that they had duct tape on their mouth. I quickly went inside, and I took the tape off the kids' mouths, starting to ask them questions. Of course, they were naturally very scared of me, and one of them asked who I was. So I told them, uh, I'm Daniel Carter. I'm from the Orlando National Guard. Are you here all by yourself? One little boy asked me. I replied, no, I'm actually with a couple of people, looking for you kids. Are you alright? No, we're scared and we want to get out of here, a little girl said. Now, I'm not going to say their names because I don't want their identities to be out to the public. You know, privacy reasons. One ten-year-old looked at me and asked if I was military. And I responded with yes. They were all very surprised because... They thought no one was coming to rescue them. I told them that me and the others were here to save them. As I was about to cut the ropes, though, I once again heard a heavy footsteps from behind me. One girl said that she was back. Uh, who's back? I asked. The monster that trapped us here. I wasted no time to put the tape back on their mouths and told them to pretend that I wasn't here. I quickly turned off the lights and I hid behind a couch, waiting for this thing to come so that I could kill it. The front door opened, and to my surprise, it's the same creature that killed Colonel Ortega. I wasted no time and used full auto on that mutant ruby and went down. But surprisingly, it was still alive, and it said to me that there was no way that they were going to destroy this studio. That it's been here for many, many years, and that it always would be here. Well, guess what? I responded. Not anymore. Because I'll expose this to everyone so that they know the truth behind Nickelodeon. Who, who are you? It asked. Your worst nightmare. I raised my foot and smashed the creature's head. Blood spattered all over the floors and the wall. I quickly untied the kids and I got them out of there, picking up my bag with the bombs in it, and I went up to the fifth floor inside the safe room. 
I yelled out for Allie that a few more kids were here. Allie and the other agents rushed over to the kids, and one agent told me that they were able to make contact with someone over at headquarters, that they were going to send choppers to save us. I was so relieved when he said that. Good. That, that means that we can get the hell out of here. Uh, when will they be here? He responded that they were on their way in about 45 minutes. Okay, let me contact the lieutenant and see what's going on. Okay, Private. You men all right? Yes, sir, Mr. Carter. We're, we're all right. Good. Watch these kids, okay? N no problem, sir. I went to contact Lieutenant Enrique. Lieutenant, this is Private Carter. Are you there? Over. Loud and clear. What's up? Well, I managed to find a few more kids that were on the fourth floor. You found a few more kids? Yeah, I did. Alright, how many did you find? I found five kids in a small room. They were tied up. He asked me if I took them to the safe room, and I responded with, Yes, I did. Oh, another thing, Lieutenant. One of the agents told me that they made contact with headquarters and that they were going to send choppers to uh, save all of us. Oh, thank God they are, because cause I don't want to die in this fucking building, and... God, thank God. Uh, when are they going to be here? I informed him that they'd be here in less than an hour. Good. Oh, Daniel, I forgot to tell you, we finished planting the bombs. That's great, sir. We're coming up right now. All right. So, I went back inside, and I grabbed the bag. Before I got out, Allie then approached the door, and she stated, Daniel, can I ask you something? Sure, go ahead, but hurry, I gotta plant these bombs. Okay, Daniel, are you afraid? I told her that I was, but not that much. Kind of a weird question. I told her that I had to plant these bombs. I said again. She just told me, all right, well, be careful. I went out again and planted the rest of the bombs. After I finished setting up the bombs, I went to go meet Lieutenant Enrique on the second floor. I get there and I see the lieutenant. I say hi. Private Carter, what are you doing down here? I just came down to see if you and your men were okay. We're doing fine, Daniel. Did you say over the intercom that there was a chopper coming here in about 45 minutes? Yes, sir. I I told you over the intercom. Oh. Okay. Uh, just making sure. All right, Lieutenant. Well, we gotta head back up to the safe room. And after I said that, though, we all suddenly heard multiple snarls from inside the room. We started to look around the room. We then hear gunfire from behind us. Guys, help me, one soldier said. We all went to help him, and when we got there, we saw that he was on the floor, scared. We picked him up, and he started to explain that he saw a figure watching him, and that he shot it, but he missed. We left the room, and we went up the stairs to the fifth floor. As we walked up the stairs, we hear the door slam from behind us. And as we looked down, we saw... Oh god, I... I don't even know how to properly explain this, but we saw three large figures, about six feet tall each, and they looked like to be characters from the Hey Arnold show. There was this one figure in particular that really gave me so much fear all over my body. One soldier said, fuck you, to the creatures, firing a couple of shots at it, and... And let me tell you something, once he shot at them, that's when the realistic Hey Arnold characters started to roar. Started to chase us, running up to the fifth floor. We finally get away from them, and they just simply banged on the door violently. I decided to take pictures of those three behind the door when we were safe. I, I know it was stupid of me to take pictures, but I had to show the world what Nickelodeon was hiding. I went back to the safe room quickly. I got in, and Lieutenant Enrique yelled at me for risking my life to take pictures of whatever the fuck those things were. 
I then go to sit down on the floor next to the kids to guard them. After a while waiting for the chopper, I check my watch and it was 2.30 in the morning. I was keeping guard of the room, but we then hear the intercom going off. Allie grabs the radio. Hello, Agent. We're about 10 minutes away from your location. You guys need to be at the rooftop so that we can pick you up. Alright, sir. We'll be at the rooftop. Lieutenant, the chopper is going to be here in about 10 minutes, Allie said. Perfect. Alright, guys. Let's go. Allie, you and the other agents have guns, right? Yes, we do. She replied. Okay. Everyone, we're getting out of here. Let's go. I quickly opened the door and we all left the room. We quickly made our way to the door, and once we got out, I heard a scream from behind me. Lieutenant Enrique, I just heard someone crying for help. You did? He asked. Yeah, someone else needs help, and I'm going down there to rescue. Wait, Private Carter, one agent said. What the hell do you want? I reply angrily. You can't go back there alone. The chopper is about to be here in, like, five minutes. You can't leave now. Look, there's another kid inside that needs our help. I'm not going to leave that kid behind. Now get your hands off of me. Daniel, d don't go, the lieutenant said. I have to go save this kid. But Daniel, the bombs that we set up are about to go off. It in 17 minutes, you can't go back and make it back in time. I paid no attention to what he said, and I went back for that kid. I could hear the lieutenant yelling at me, stating, Daniel, over and over. I went back inside looking for the kid who screamed, and the scream went off again. I followed it and it led me to the safe room. I got in and I yelled out, Hello, is anyone there? I'm right here, mister. I turn around to see a little girl hiding in the corner of the room, crying. I quickly pick her up and go back to the rooftop. I get to the rooftop just in time to see the helicopter landing on it, and I gave Allie the little girl, and we all got in. But... Just when I thought it was over. Just when I thought it was over, the unthinkable happened. As I was about to get inside, I hear the door behind us slamming, and one of the killer employees grabbed me and started to jump me. Everyone, including the door gunner, fired at the employees, and they went down easily, but the creatures from before started to appear, and one of them jumped at the helicopter. Luckily, it missed. And thank God that it missed. There were a total of four creatures. Two of them were small, but vicious, and two of them were the same ones from where I saw at the stairs. They all stared at me, and that... That fucking mutant Max said, You're not going anywhere, Daniel Carter. Yeah, yeah, you killed our best friends. And for that, you will be dead. I grabbed my pistol and shot the creature in the head, killing it instantly. No, no, Gerald, my friend, one of them said. Oh, now you're going to pay for that. I grabbed an axe from the helicopter, and I also took out my knife. The creature showed its large teeth and claws. Pilot, get out of here. W what about you? He stated, but I quickly interjected. I'll be fine, I replied back with a serious face. Daniel, just come inside the helicopter, one soldier said. No, someone has to stay and kill these mutants so that they won't hurt anyone ever again. No, please... No, Daniel, Allie said crying. I told her that it was okay. That I would come back. That it was a promise. I then went to shake Lieutenant Enrique's hand, stating, not to worry. That I would make sure that this place was gone for good. That it was gone forever. Please, don't worry. Just go. Pilot, you heard what he just said. Go. Now. And before the pilot could say anything, before the helicopter even took off, Allie wanted to tell me something else. What is it? I asked. I love you, Daniel. And that caught me off guard, because I never knew that she had that much feeling for me. 
and then smiled as they all flew away back to safety. I had to fight four of these mutants, and I had to do it quick before the bombs went off. The mutants looked at me. I wasted no time, and I charged at them. They charged at me, and instantly I was able to kill two of them in under three minutes. All that was left were Mutant Max and Mutant Arnold. Mutant Arnold then jumped, and I slid under and cut his stomach open with my knife, and then I walked around towards Mutant Arnold that was half dead, but stabbed him in the head just to make sure, cutting off his head open with my tomahawk. After I did that, I couldn't see the Mutant Max anywhere. I thought that he must have been hiding somewhere, until it stabbed me in the leg, and I was in so much pain from that stab, it came at me and started to claw at me and punch back at me, knocking me to the ground, but but it wasn't dead. This asshole wouldn't go down. I got up slowly and went for the tomahawk, and before I could even get to it, the mutant Max grabbed me by my throat. I then grabbed the creature by its throat, and thanks to my strength, I took parts of the neck, and it started to let me go. Let me tell you something, this mutant was probably the strongest that i faced so far. It started to run after me again, and as he got closer, I quickly picked him up and body slammed that fucking mutant. Finally, I took the tomahawk and started bashing it, ripping apart every single part of his body over and over again. But it was still alive. Even even after all of that bashing, the mutant with the tomahawk, it still wouldn't go down. Mutant Max bellowed a war cry. I grabbed the creature by the throat. Now, I will let the whole entire world know the truth about Nickelodeon. The creature growled and said that I would never win. Go to hell. You no good, ugly, demonic son of a bitch! I raised the tomahawk and I cut its head clean off with blood spattering my face and clothes. My clothes were ripped from the scratches and I took the head. And at that moment, I remembered the bombs. I forgot the bombs were going to set off in two minutes. Shit, I needed to get the hell out of there fast. I grabbed my weapons and I ran full speed. Finally, I got out of the building and I got inside the Humvee. But before I started the car, I saw ten more killer employees outside with weapons ready to charge at me. I quickly got to the back and I grabbed the same M60 machine gun and fired at them. I killed the last remaining killer employees. I, I did it. I then found a gasoline tank inside the Humvee, going outside and pouring it all over the studios, lighting the motherfucking studios on fire. I got in, and I speed off, breaking the gate entrance, and I was finally out of that godforsaken place. I then get to a spot far, far away from the studios, and then the explosion. The whole studio was no more. I was laughing my ass off when I saw the whole place blown to pieces. Like I said before, you fucked with the wrong people, you sons of bitches. I drive off. I start to head for the National Guard base. Let me tell you something, my body was covered in small scratch wounds, and yeah, I needed medical assistance, but but it felt great. I turned on the radio intercom. Hello, this is Private Carter. Can anyone hear me? Over. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, who is this? This is Private Daniel Carter from the Orlando National Guard. I need to know where Lieutenant Enrique is. Uh, wait just a second, Daniel. They responded. Lieutenant. Lieutenant! You're alive. He said. He was so stunned that I was alive. Yeah, Lieutenant Enrique, I'm pretty messed up now and I need help. Where are you? We're all at the FBI headquarters. Where are you? at the road right now, heading back to the base. Oh, Daniel, don't go to the base. The agents need you here right now. How come? I asked. Well, because they want to hear your side of the story, of what you saw in the building, including the pictures that you took. Couldn't you tell them all that happened, sir? No offense. 
No, we couldn't. They wouldn't let us. They said that they needed you because you fought off those creatures tooth and nail and found that satanic stuff in the building. I stated that I'd head over. And to give me the location. There should be a GPS on the Humvee. Uh, do you see it? I saw it. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, what should I put? Lieutenant Enrique gave me the address, and I arrived there, after 20 minutes of driving. I parked the car, and I entered the building, and I told this female agent that I was part of the Nickelodeon Studios investigation. Oh, yes, um, follow me. I'll show you where they're at now. Thank you, miss. She took me on the elevator, and we got to the second floor. There were lots of agents there. She showed us this room. Well, I guess we could safely call it a secret room. Uh, we entered it, and I saw Lieutenant Enrique, Agent Lee, Ali, and, to my surprise, Colonel Ortega. I ran to him, hugging him, and I said that I was surprised that he was still alive. Glad you're alive too, kid. The rest of us all hugged and said that they were happy to see me alive. Four agents came in and told everyone to leave the room, and the agents started to interrogate me starting to ask me questions about the incident. I told them everything that I saw. I also told them that me and the others blew up the building, and now that it's down in the ground, there wasn't much left. After an hour of being interrogated, they all told me to leave, and really, that's where it ends. You know, I went to get medical help for my injuries. I spent a month in the hospital, and then a week later, Allie and the rest came to visit me, and... And again, I was so happy to see them. After we all talked for an hour, the nurse came in and told them that they had to leave because meeting hours were over. After they left, they told me one last time that what I did back there was amazing. And that they'd never met anyone so brave like me. Thank you, I said. I appreciate that. You're a hero. You know that, right? I turned to look at Allie and the rest of them, and I said, I don't consider myself a hero. I just did my job, and thanks to us, the kids are safe and, and back with their families. The nurse came in and stated again that meeting hours were over and that they needed to go. Before Allie left, she then gave me a kiss and told me bye. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you, Allie. She left. And after a month of being there, I left as well. I went back to the National Guard and served for a few more years. I'm 25 years old now, and I'm now living peacefully in a nice house in the countryside. I just hope that nothing like this ever happens to me ever again.